After working in music stores for 15 plus years, I've taken a liking to Yamaha guitars. Whether you're looking for a killer budget guitar, an upgrade to your current guitar, or just a good sounding acoustic guitar, Yamaha seems to have something for everyone. But they make so many models. Where do you even start? Well, don't worry. Today, I'm gonna narrow things down and share with you my five favorite Yamaha acoustic guitars. Hey, Tech family, welcome to episode 199 of the Acoustic Tuesday Show. That's right, we are knocking on the door to episode 200. This show is all about bringing fun, focus, and progress to your guitar journey through my weekly Guitar Geek list, plus success stories from your fellow TAC members. Do you ever feel like playing regularly is impossible? Like playing at the same time and at the same place just simply will not work for you? Maybe your work schedule is unpredictable. Maybe your daily life schedule is just crazy. Maybe you're balancing other priorities like school. Well, today you're gonna meet TAC family member Mac, who actually has all of those things going on all at once. Yet he still finds time to regularly play his guitar and experience progress day in and day out. You're gonna learn Mac's secret here in just a little bit and how to incorporate it into your own guitar journey. Plus, you'll get your weekly dose of acoustic guitar news you can use, which includes some jaw-dropping tone woods, the best guitar geek way to greet the day. You don't wanna miss this, I promise you that, and so much more. But first, let's explore the world of Yamaha acoustic guitars, and I wanna share with you my five favorite. Okay, before we dig into the countdown of my five favorite Yamaha acoustic guitars, I should say this. I don't work for Yamaha guitars. I don't sell Yamaha guitars. I am not a Yamaha guitars artist. I simply like what they have to offer in the world of acoustic guitars, and I wanna share that with you. After working in music stores for quite some time, I've noticed that Yamaha guitars are pretty darn good, and five models in particular stand out to me. So let's go ahead and dive in in a countdown fashion. Here's how this is gonna work. I'm gonna name the model, I'm gonna share with you what it costs at the time of this filming, and I'm gonna share with you what I like about it, why it stands out to me. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dig in. The first guitar on my list coming in at the number five position are guitars, plural, coming out of the NX series, the NX series. These guitars are quite simply phenomenal, and I have to cite two models here, the NCX and the NTX. Why am I naming two different models? Well, first of all, they both cost $439. The NCX is a stage-worthy classical guitar, while the NTX is also a nylon string guitar, but it's a bit of a crossover instrument for somebody that likes electric guitar but wants to bring that nylon string sound into their sonic offering. It's got a slimmer nut width. I believe it has a slimmer body as well. These guitars are standouts in my opinion, from the way they sound acoustically to the way that they sound plugged in. So with that being said, let's go ahead and listen to the NCX first, and then we'll follow that up with the NTX. Now, before I move on to the next instrument in the countdown, I should say this. The previous two instruments that I mentioned are from the NX series. Now, the NX series contains quite a few different instruments. The ones that I just mentioned were the NCX1 and the NTX1. I wanted to make sure to be clear on that. They're actually the entry level NX series instruments and they offer a ton of guitar for the price. Again, those are priced at $439, pretty astounding. Next up on my countdown, coming in at the number four position is the Yamaha FG800. But not just the Yamaha FG800, also the Yamaha FS800. Tone, how can you continue adding two guitars per countdown position? Well, these guitars are priced the same. Quite simply, they're just offered in different sizes. The Yamaha FG and FS800 are offered at 200 bucks, $200. This guitar, I believe is probably the best instrument in this price category, period. End statement. 
The Yamaha FG800 was just recently redesigned, I want to say in 2016. Previously, it was the FG700S. Now it is the FG800, FS800 as well. And I have to say, this guitar continues to get better and they keep holding the line at the $200 price point. This is a great beginner guitar. This is a great campfire guitar. This is just a great all around guitar. That being the case, I'm sure you want to hear it. So first, let's listen to the Yamaha FG800, and then we'll follow it up with the FS800. clearly getting too excited about these guitars because I keep forgetting necessary details. The FG800 is the Dreadnought model and the FS800 is the smaller orchestra sized model. Okay, now that I've got all the details out, let's go ahead and move on to the number three position. And the number three position is held by Yamaha's new Red Label series. Yes, these guitars knock my socks off. Now I used to have a Yamaha Red Label. I probably had it like an original Yamaha Red Label. I probably had it 10 or, or more years ago, and I loved this guitar. It sat out next to my computer. I played it so often, and it sounded so good. Tony, why'd you get rid of it? I don't know. That's a story for another day. But Yamaha just announced the new Red Label series, and specifically the FG3 and the FS3 are the models I want to highlight here. Again, the FG3 is a dreadnought sized instrument, and the FS3 is a folk sized or orchestra model sized instrument. These guitars pack a huge sonic punch. Wow, these guitars come in at $7.99. Again, this is for the FG3 and the FS3, part of the Red Label series. Now, there are various models within this series. Some of them include the new Atmosphere pickup. Some of them do not. These models that I'm citing right now do not contain the pickup. I think for $7.99, you're going to get one hell of an acoustic guitar. If you want to bump the price just a little bit, you can get the pickup system on board. It's a pretty stellar pickup system as well. So, now that I've I've cooked up these Red Label models, I've got you all excited about them. Let's go ahead and listen to them. First, we'll listen to the FG3, and then following that, the FS3. <laughs> On to the number two position and occupying the number two spot is yet another pair of instruments, but this time from the classical world. Yes, both of these guitars are nylon string instruments. The Yamaha CG142, either the CG142S or the CG142C. Both of these instruments come in at a very appetizing 299 bucks. Yes, 299 bucks for a beautiful classical style guitar. Now, the CG142S has a spruce top, while the CG142C has a cedar top. If I had to pick one right now, it would be the cedar topped instrument because I love the warmth and depth that cedar offers. But here we are talking about a nylon string classical guitar with a solid top for 299 bucks and the things sound incredible. We used to sell these like hotcakes at the music store and for good reason, because they're at a great price point and it's a lot of guitar at this particular price point. What's the difference between spruce and cedar? You're about to find out. First, let's listen to the CG142S and then we'll follow it up with the CG142C. <laughs> Congratulations, you've reached the pinnacle of Yamaha Mountain. You've summited Yamaha Peak, and this is the exact point in time where I will reveal my favorite Yamaha acoustic guitar. Coming in at the number one position is an instrument that costs $169. Coming in at the number one position is the Yamaha FG Junior 2. 
This is a three quarter size instrument that's perfect for a young guitar geek just getting started on the instrument. It's great for a full size guitar geek looking for an inexpensive travel instrument. It sounds good because it has a solid top and the tuning stability is top notch, especially if you use medium gauge strings on it. Yes, it is a tiny guitar. Does it sound like a full size guitar? No, but for a tiny guitar that costs 169 bucks, it sounds pretty damn good. But I'll go ahead and let you be the judge of that. Let's give a listen to the Yamaha FG Junior 2. In closing, I do want to add one thing. The term best guitar is completely 100% subjective. But I do feel that there are some criteria that we can assign to what a best guitar is. The best guitar is one that plays well for you and your style. The best guitar is one that sounds good to you. The best guitar is one that fits within your budget. The best guitar is one that inspires you to pick it up and play it and enjoy the instrument. And I think this list is a great example of the best guitar can come in a variety of packages, a variety of price points. You just have to find the one that works for you and what you need it for. So that being the case, those are my five favorite Yamaha acoustic guitars, which brings me to a question I have for you. What's your favorite Yamaha acoustic guitar? I just named five. I know that there are some awesome, awesome instruments out there made by Yamaha. So if you have one that was not on my list, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. I'm curious to know what your favorite Yamaha model is, and I'm sure you'll help out your fellow guitar geeks in their guitar shopping as well. If you ever feel like there's quite simply just not enough time to play the guitar, you're not alone. This is a very commonly held belief amongst guitar geeks, but it's actually false, and I'm gonna prove it to you. Well, I'm not gonna prove it to you. TAC family member Mac is gonna prove it to you. Mac is a firefighter, a retired veteran, and he's putting himself through school, yet he still manages to find time every single day to play the guitar. How does he do it? Well, we're gonna actually hear directly from Mac. I talked to Mac during our last 90 day progress party within Tony's Acoustic Challenge, where he not only told me a little bit about his guitar journey, but he also told me about the goals that he's working towards and the guitar routine that's gonna help him get there. And you might be thinking, wait, guitar routine? Yet he's busy all the time. How does that compute? Well, here's Mac, he'll tell you all about it. Um, I have a pretty, I have a fairly unique schedule, um, but I, seven days a week, there's no set time. Um, I'm a veteran and a firefighter, so I kind of have a sporadic, like I'm putting myself through school as well. Wow. Um, so with the, with firefighting, it's kind of sporadic where we're at. We're not a full-time haul. So we, we live, we live by the pager. So we're 24, seven, 365. When it goes off, we go. Um, so I, Whenever, like I have it hanging on the wall, I walk in, there's times where it's like, oh, I'm just gonna strum around because there's a few songs I've learned that sound a little bit better that are really easy. So I'll kind of pick up from that. Then I'll go back to other stuff that some of the, like maybe the daily challenge that I struggle with, like the, like for example, the last two days were really tough for me trying to pick up all the, the finger picking and strumming because I am yeah. still still pretty new. But uh, yeah, I can keep uh, every day pretty much. I can, I can go for as long as my fingers will let me. That's awesome. You know, I, I, I appreciate you sharing that because I think a lot of times the, the, um, the common thought is my schedule is so per sporadic. I, I would never be able to commit to any sort of guitar routine. And here you are saying, you know what? Yeah. Uh, firefighter vet. I live by the pager. So at any point in time, I could be pulled from what I'm doing, but you're saying, you know what? I've actually set up my guitar room with the guitar out so that when I do have the, that precious break in the day, when I do have some time, I can hop right in. Um, that's awesome, man. Mac, I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, any other words of advice for your fellow guitar geeks? Anything you want to share? Any tips or tricks that you've used that works for you? Well, since I'm still pretty new and I just finished the 30 days, um, it was almost like one, like one day it felt like it clicked a little more. I'm still so new, but it just felt like that aha, like you get past that, like, where do I go? And I think that the tack is, has been sort of how you've designed it for, it's for people like me when you're going around because there's thousands, millions of YouTube videos. Where do you start? What do you do? Do you just sit there and start learning how to strum the C and the G or do you actually build skills that 
are more transferable than just strumming a single chord for 10 minutes a day or kind of thing. And um, yeah, just keep with it, honestly. And you'll kind of hit that moment where you're like, hey, it gets really fun once you, you have the, the little small victories, small wins. Uh, what's the goal that you're working on over the next 90 days? Uh, I would like to get overall uh, just more consistent at my strumming patterns. I feel like I'm just awkward and robotic with it. I'd like to be able to master the F and B minor, which might be pretty tough to do in the 90 days. But uh, and I'll, because of because I want to master that, um, that leads me into my last one is I really want to be able to play, including the finger picking solos, uh, Wicked Game by Chris Isaac. It's one of my favorite songs. Sounds really nice. <laughs> Huge Guitar Geek round of applause to Mac. I think it's so cool to hear from someone who is busy all the time, has an extremely unpredictable schedule, yet he's still finding time to play the guitar every single day. And more importantly, he's actually enjoying it. I love it, and I loved hearing about Mac's goals. Now, you might be thinking, wait, Tone, I haven't heard this before on the Acoustic Tuesday show. You said something about a 90-day progress party, and here you're talking to Mac about his guitar journey. What is this 90-day guitar progress party? Well, every 90 days within Tony's Acoustic Challenge, essentially the first Wednesday of each quarter, each three-month period, all the Tony's Acoustic Challenge members get together and we talk about our guitar routine, the goals that we have, and how we're gonna get there. And we're able to share it with all of the Guitar Geek family within Tony's Acoustic Challenge. It is certainly something that you must attend if you're a Tony's Acoustic Challenge member. So if that's the case and you're a member and you're like, okay, I'm not missing the next one, when does it happen? Well, I've got that date for you. It's gonna happen on Wednesday, October 6th, at 11 a.m. Mountain Time. Wednesday, October 6th at 11 a.m. Mountain Time is the next is the next Tony's Acoustic Challenge 90-day progress party. Make sure to mark your calendars and make sure to attend because I have to tell you this, it is the single most important thing you can do for your guitar journey, for your goals, and to get enjoyment and fulfillment out of your guitar by developing a routine that will help you get your goals get to your goals, and you're able to share that with your other fellow guitar geeks. And if you're having some struggles, your other fellow guitar geeks are there to help you out. So again, mark your calendars. Wednesday, October 6th at 11 a.m. Mountain Time is the next Tony's Acoustic Challenge 90-Day Guitar Progress Party. I wanna go way back in time now, back to Acoustic Tuesday episode 192, where we talked about Elizabeth Cotton and her finger picking style, and elements that you could take from her style and apply to your own guitar playing. There were some awesome comments on that show, and I wanna read through quite a few of them right now. This first one comes from Shirley G, and she says this, I saved all my lunch money for two years when I was in high school so I could buy my first guitar. I love that, and that's kind of a, a um, a segue from Elizabeth Cotton's story of, I believe she saved a quarter a month until she could actually buy her first guitar. And Shirley was very much on that same program as well. Uh, very cool, Shirley, thank you for the comment. The next comment comes from Chase Ingram, and he says this, would love to see a video about Lead Belly in this format. Chase, what an awesome recommendation. You know, that was the first Acoustic Tuesday episode where I looked at a player and a signature part of a player's style and kind of taught it in the show. And I believe during that show I asked, I said, hey, you know, what other artists would you like to see done in this Acoustic Tuesday show format? And Chase spoke up and he said, hey, Lead Belly would be a great one. And I agree, I'm actually gonna put that on my list. I really dig that. Our next comment comes from 7-6. They say this, awesome format, awesome videos. No request for a person, but perhaps some flat picking and someone who you think does it best. Man, I tell you what, it'd be really fun to do a Doc Watson episode. In fact, that's a name I saw rattling around in the comments section and I thought, Maybe Doc Watson's our next one. He has a he has a unique style, and he is definitely one of the one of the foundational flat picking artists that I think everyone should know about. Again, I'll put that one on my list as well. So far, the list is looking good. Lead Belly and Doc Watson. That's a pretty awesome start to a list. Our next comment comes from Ralph Rounds. He says this. I totally love the deep dive approach. It was so absorbing. I could have watched all day. Bring on the finger style Piedmont Blues. Pink Anderson, Brownie McGee, I'll go wherever you will. Awesome, uh, thanks so much for watching, Ralph. I'm really glad you dug the show. And this is one of the cool things that, that I've always appreciated about 
studying an artist. I think it's one thing to study the style, but it's also another thing to study the background of the artist themselves, much like we did with Elizabeth Cotton, where you kind of get into their life and see what maybe influenced them to play the way that they did. And it really adds this, this full three-dimensional picture of the artist that, that kind of elevates their style and, and, and brings you this amazing context of, of how they play and why they play. I know I'm rambling a little bit. I just get excited. I'm a, I'm a true geek at heart, and I love doing a deep dive on the artists, not only how they play, but again, where they came from and, and why they play the way they do. Again, thanks for your comment, Ralph. Uh, our next comment comes from Nick Seals. He says this, I really enjoyed today's episode. I'm just starting out on my acoustic journey, and me personally, I've never really educated myself in the realm of musicians. I loved hearing her story, and I loved when you played Freight Train and kind of broke it down. I would love to expand my knowledge on other acoustic guitar players just like Elizabeth Cotton. An inspiration for sure. Great episode, man. Uh, Nick, thanks so much for your kind words, and I'm really glad the episode resonated with you. Uh, judging by the, the popular opinion, I think we'll be seeing similar episodes in the same vein focused on a singular artist here in the future. On to the final segment of the Acoustic Tuesday show, and that is indeed acoustic news you can use. Let's go ahead and dive right in. First up is a picture of a tone wood that stopped me dead in my tracks. I was just minding my own business, I was scrolling Instagram, and then this picture came across my feed and my jaw hit the floor. Well, first it hit the table and then it hit the floor. Wow, this is a stunning example of what mother nature is, is capable of. I, I just, it, it, it's, it's a, it seems magical, it seems mythical, it seems mysterious, it seems wizardrish. It just, a, just a crazy, crazy piece of ebony, and I'm so glad that uh, they took a picture and shared it with all of us. Next up on my list is, well, it's another Instagram post. You're sitting there thinking, gosh, Tone, all you do is scroll Instagram. That's not true. I just use it to keep up with my favorite guitar players. John Five happens to be one of my favorite guitar players, and he showed me this Guitar Geek way to greet the day. Some pretty incredible pajamas and some pretty amazing guitar skills as well. So I hope to see you one day just waking up in your pajamas with the hat and everything, just, just holding your guitar and playing, maybe while you're making bacon and eggs. Actually, not while you're making bacon, because bacon spits. You don't want to get your guitar near that. But maybe while you're making eggs, maybe while someone else is making eggs for you. I don't know, whatever the case may be, hopefully you wake up and just start playing guitar. Uh, next up on my list is another Instagram thing. I'm sorry, it's another Instagram thing. This is, this is a, a, an account that you must follow, Folkway Music. Folkway Music is based in Canada, I believe. And you can follow them on Instagram, and it is, it is a guitar geek playground of sorts. First of all, the photography is amazing. Second of all, you're gonna see some amazing vintage Gibsons. And third of all, and my favorite reason for following this account, again, Folkway Music, is the way that he documents repairs. You get an inside look as to what crosses his repair bench, what kind of crazy uh, apparatus he's, he's creating so he can fix these old instruments. Sometimes he creates jigs and things, and it's just kind of fun to kind of get a sneak peek behind the scenes of a, a very talented repair person and just an overall awesome shop as well. So again, make sure to follow Folkway Music on Instagram, whether you like the photography, vintage Gibson instruments, or you just like seeing cool kooky things on a repair bench. It's a must follow account. Uh, oh, this next item is a follow up on a previous news item. Uh, a couple shows back, I announced that David and the Devil was releasing a Charlie Patton cover album. Turns out, I lied to you. Turns out I'm a big fat liar. I'm not really a liar. Turns out he decided not to release that album, saying that, you know what? Uh, Charlie Patton's been ripped off enough, and I don't need to put an album out that is another ripoff of Charlie Patton's stuff. I'm paraphrasing. You can see the post for the full scoop. But he is making the tunes available on YouTube for everyone to enjoy. And that being the case, let's go ahead and enjoy one right now. I 
I know you thought I was done with Instagram. I thought I was done with Instagram, but it turns out I've got one more little news nugget that was from Instagram that I wanna share with you. It's really less of a news nugget and more of a funny picture you just need to see. It's brought to us by Meme Grass Revival, another account that you should definitely follow if you are on Instagram. And it's quite simply a picture of Bruce Willis's face on Billy Strings with the caption, Willis Strings. <laughs> I just think it's funny. I wanted to share it with you because I know we've got a lot of Billy Strings fans that watch the show, and, well, we probably have a lot of Bruce Willis fans that watch the show, and when you combine the two, you simply get Willis Strings. Anyways, uh, moving on to uh, so, uh, a non-Instagram thing. <laughs> Sorry, I lost track of my thoughts there. I've got uh, two more things I want to tell you about. This first one is an instrument that I found while surfing uh, Norman's Rare Guitars. Uh, Norm's Rare Guitars does this YouTube, uh, they post a video every Friday that's, it's Flat Top Friday. And this one caught my eye because I had never heard of the Luthier before. The Luthier is Joel Whitehead. Now, Joel Whitehead used to work for Norm's, and he since stopped working for Norm's and is now building his own instruments. Well, there is an all mahogany small body guitar that he just built that's at Norm's right now, or at least I think it's still there. I'm not sure if it will still be there. It sounds pretty darn good. Well, it's, it's made by Joel Whitehead. It sounds amazing, small body, mahogany. You've got to hear it. Here it is. I am really close to wrapping up the show, but there are two dates you need to mark on your calendar. Yes, we've got some new music coming our way. First, from Watch House, formerly Mandolin Orange, they are releasing their very first album under the Watch House name on August 13th, so mark that on your calendar. Actually just saw them at the Pine Creek Lodge over in uh, south of Livingston here in Montana. What a stunning show. Simply, simply stunning. Wow. Uh, the final date I want you to mark on your calendar is September 17th. Uh, Alexa Rose, whom I featured on the Acoustic Tuesday show before, is releasing a full-length album on September 17th. And I've, really, I've, I've listened to two release tracks from it so far. Uh, simply stunning. Human is a, is a great song. In fact, what the heck? Let's just listen to a quick little snippet of it right now. Here's Alexa Rose and her new song, Human. Okay, now I'm ready to wrap up the Acoustic Tuesday show, but before I do so, let's go ahead and take a sneak peek into next week. And next week, on the 200th episode of Acoustic Tuesday, we'll be talking about the five most common mistakes that happen when you're learning the guitar, and most importantly, how to correct them. That's all happening next week on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Yes, next week is episode 200. How crazy. Remember, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time here on YouTube. I wanna thank you so much for joining me today, and please do remember this. Your guitar success, however you define it, is directly related to your guitar routine. So please invest the time in developing your guitar routine and make sure to have fun every single day that you play. Again, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for being a guitar geek, and I'll see you next Tuesday on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Cheers, and guitar geeks unite.